I'm obsessed with food. I love food. Every bite of it sends dopamine to my brain and love it to my heart. I definitely have a weird, complex relationship with our life source. It consumes me just as much as I consume it. I have a habit of getting over fixated on one food. If I find a new meal or dish that tickles my brain in a certain way, I will eat it constantly for months, sometimes years. My first memory of this hyperfixation was when I was four years old. That food of choice was goldfish crackers. My mom would buy a barrel sized container from Costco and leave it in an accessible place in the kitchen. On the daily, I would stick my tiny hands in this container, grab as many of these cheesy, crunchy, yet soft crackers, and fit as many of those things in my mouth as I could. Jumped to being 16, and I was obsessed with macaroni salad for some reason. Eating it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, packing it in like I thought it was there was going to be some sort of shortage for some reason. Another example from the ages of 19 to 22, I literally ate pizza every single day. Every single day, except for some days where I would treat myself to chicken pot pie. For some reason, my brain thought that chicken pot pie was a delicacy, uh, so I would only eat it on special occasions, aka the days where I would get my paycheck from my minimum wage job at Blockbuster Video. The pizza wasn't good pizza at all, it wasn't delivery, it was frozen pizza, cheap frozen pizza that I could eat in large quantities without noticing my bank account cry. As you can see, I'm a full savory bitch. Fuck those sugary sweets. I want all the, the salt, all the salt, and preferably I want it fried. I've had food obsessions that look like tacos, french fries, uh, potato chips, a and Beyond Meat burgers, all of it. My most recent obsession was with pad thai and sushi. My taste got really expensive as I got older. <laughs> this particular obsession was different though because it involved actually interacting with, with a human being to get it. My life of buying large quantities at the grocery store at the self-check outline was no more. This exchange involved calling the same person and seeing the same delivery man every single time. It was my biggest disappointment that this place wasn't on Uber Eats. They started recognizing my number, and, and the delivery guy knew my name. I was delighted and horrified at the same time. There were days where I would lie to my friendly restaurant friends, utensils for three, please, and leave the TV on when the delivery guy would show up just to give the illusion that someone else was there. Welcome to House of Stone, the podcast where uh, everyone has a story and we get into the nitty gritty of it all. Today, I have Mike Mayo. Hi, how are you? The, the <laughs> Mike Mayo. Yeah. I have a little bit of an introduction for you I'm going to read. Okay, yeah, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> Mike Mayo is a stand-up comedian and many other things here in Montreal. He's been on Off JFL and was named Comedy Nest Top Gun of co is Top Guns of Comedy? Like Young Guns really? of Young Guns, Guns, Guns of Comedy. Guns of oh, comedy. oh my God. Young Guns of Comedy. He was ones. named twice, which is the only comedian who's ever been named twice. True, I'm the only one who holds that title. Yes. <laughs> 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 His style of comedy is uh, original, yet has influences of some of the greats. Uh, I would say you have influences of Norm MacDonald and Bill Hicks, if I had to name a few. Yeah, remember we watched the documentary on Bill Hicks this week? Yeah, that yeah. Was great. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was really I do remember it happened this week. Sure. <laughs> um, uh, I usually ask the guests to promote themselves in some way at this point, like their social media handles, but I know you don't engage in social I'm media a, yeah, I'm, that I'm, much. I'm silly like that. I don't, I should get more involved. Oh, no, no, I you don't. don't. Really care. You don't, I don't really care. I just don't care. <laughs> That's the thing. I should. People are like, what's your Instagram? I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that. the the insta Instagram, yeah, you're like that should have it because you were asking like you should get an Instagram. I'm like, yeah, but that requires work. You don't have to I work have to at take it. photos. You and don't. Do you can things. just have the account exist and then have nothing <laughs> uploaded. Yes, I can post photos for you. It'll oh. be like a series of photos of Mike Mayo. Like, I don't what, know, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> 
went <laughs> coming back from like, drinking oh. smoothies. Uh, the, I made one. It's in my bag. I'm gonna drink it later. Yeah, it was it was okay. You I've can pull it out for a conversation piece if you want. It it will. It's not the most interesting conversation. No, not really. <laughs> it's a it's, it's a, a mason jar. jar. It's a jar. It's a mason jar that's green, basically, because it's a it's green. Green. But with kale from my grandmother's garden. It is. It it does. We yeah. saw your grand. It okay. I was gonna wait till the end of the episode, trying no, to like make it a secret. I was trying to make thing. it a secret that oh this is my boyfriend but yeah Mike Mayo is my boyfriend yeah and, and I you're my girlfriend I hear <laughs> yeah <laughs> from what I understand from what you understand I'm yeah. your I'm your girlfriend that's cool great we, awesome we, well, we did it we, we, yes I'm on your podcast now <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here and I'm I, so excited I'm so scared <laughs> <laughs> I remember remember Jesse Spano and uh, no Save that by the bell oh right right remember? right. Jeez, what am I, the only old person here? <laughs> that was a whole, wasn't that a meme? It was like, I'm so scared. That was she a very specific. In Morris's arms. Very specific episode. Yeah. She was taking speed. Hundreds of she episodes of Saved by the Bell. It was an anti, it was like a don't, it was like a very special episode of Saved by the Bell. Don't do drugs. Oh my God. That's, she got addicted to caffeine pills. No, it's, well, it was caffeine pills. Oh, what a dork. It was, no, like literally looked as like, I may be wrong, but I don't I think I'm wrong. it was like methamphetamine. No, no, no. It was caffeine pills. Well, that's stupid. That shows. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can get addicted to anything, but of all the things to write in the show, caffeine pills is not. I like how you start your show. I also am addicted to potato chips. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, that's why. I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you think I, uh, you know, plan this, you know, produce this episode with you? <laughs> no, I mean, as you know, we talked about that at the beginning and stuff. Yeah. Like you, uh, you uh, I don't know about goldfish crackers. You, you did you you but, not uh, like goldfish no, crackers really as a that. kid? No, no. Really. I mean, I don't eat them now, but um, what's the old like uh, internet joke? Is like. Do vegetarians eat animal crackers? <laughs> Silly, <laughs> stupid. That is stupid. I'm like fucking goldfish. <laughs> Can we swear on this thing? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Fuck everyone. <laughs> All right. Um, He's not listening. Yeah, that you're like I had cool. you on the food episode because I love talking yeah, about food. I love food. Um, I have a problem with food, but it's fine. Um, Do you have a problem with my food? I thought we made some pretty good we stuff. We make good food, but I have a problem with eating too much food. Um, what did I get you for your birthday this year? Why don't we tell <laughs> the listeners? Tell the listeners what you got me for my birthday. I thought you were gonna. Uh, well, I'm. You're. You're asking me questions like you're. <laughs> I thought we were going to bounce the tennis ball back we and are. forth. We are. We are. Sure. Um, yeah. So you, uh, f- let's first start, blah, blah, start off. Okay. I had you on the food episode because out of everyone I know, yeah. you're the most obsessed with food ever. You sure. love talking about food. I love good food. You love talking about food, um, especially vegetarian food or vegan food uh, because we both are vegetarian or vegan. Yeah. Um, and There's yeah. so much good stuff now. Yeah. I, I remember the first time that we actually engaged and had a conversation. And your roommate laughed at me. Did we were at did the bar, we were at the bar and they were like uh, cause, oh cause yeah like, you were talking oh, I was talking about uh, uh, you were talking about queso dip I was like oh I you think. gotta get a Vitamix and you gotta get a bunch of cashews and almonds you can make this. So they were like yeah. well, what the hell is he, <laughs> he was so uh, he, I was so excited I was like I love making <laughs> the queso dip is great yeah. though no but like this is actually before this oh, okay. um uh, I was the week before at Andrew's memorial. Um, oh, we right. were outside and yeah. I was complaining that I was hungry and you're like, do you want me to buy you French fries? <laughs> you had just met me. You Where was I going to go to get you those? Uh, it was because we were at Hurley's. They have I was going to buy you fries from Hurley's. Yeah. Are they really good? I've, I've never had them. Because I remember, like, they're like, oh, there's french fries inside. I remember, for some reason, you already knew no, I was... No, because I felt to- bad because I was bumming all your cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I swap you some cigarettes for fries. Yeah. Because I'm not true. always the healthiest fella. Okay, no, uh, no. Anyway, so one of the first exchanges <laughs> was about food. Mm-hmm. And now a lot of our, our life is about food. I mean, everyone's life the is best, about food. Uh, thing, uh, the best thing, the air fryer. Yes. Which we didn't mention the air fryer. Yeah. <laughs> we, I, I was getting there. Well, <laughs> Let I, me I, host this podcast. <laughs> the air fryer and then you get a tofu press. Yeah. And we make like really good air fried tofu, which to most normal people sounds horrid and Yeah, but it's intro- not. You guys no, are you guys are you guys are making tofu wrong. Yeah. yeah. So Mike got me delicious. an air fryer for my birthday. 
say. Yeah. And um, when he got it for me, super excited, <laughs> um, really wanted one. And I don't know what we talked about for the next three months after that. It was like a little baby. Besides... Our, the air fryer. It's our yeah. air air fryer that we uh, yeah, take care of. Fryer. The Vitamix that we set up. Yes. And we also got the Omega Juicer, but we're not using that enough. We got to balance <laughs> it out with the healthy yes. stuff. I mean, we're not dead yet. We'll use it. Well, my doctor told me <laughs> <laughs> my triglycerides <laughs> levels are high. Cause it was Imagine if this was like many. on the episode, you told me you were dying like for the first time. God. Oh, my God. It was all those... <laughs> <laughs> it was all those plant-based chicken sandwiches from uh, uh, pizza, 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 pizza that uh, were oh my god those are those are tasty those are for the I hope they're I hope we didn't alienate some of the listeners but we do like I alienate a lot of my friends we, by telling them <laughs> I get food from them uh, yeah it's open late and you can get yeah. plant-based and yeah. vegan food and it's not the best yeah. But it's there. It's we we've talked about this several times like even on the car right here. Yeah. Um Pizza, pizza, every time. Yeah. My roommate, Fernando, who's here, Mike Mayo, my boyfriend, they get pizza every second week from there. Every single time. They hate it. They they yeah. hate it. I mean, they don't pizza, know how to follow pizza, 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 I guess you're trying. I guess you're trying. They don't know trying. how to follow instructions. I get a thin crust, and it's a loaf of bread. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's so doughy. And ev- like, uh, you do this every single... You think there yeah. would be another restaurant you could try. One time... And maybe potentially not be disappointed. They nailed the crust, and they put, like, barely any toppings on it. <laughs> they just came... I was like, what? And then I complained... And then they called me, like... It was, they, like, a non-bread. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Like, they got it at an Indian restaurant across the street. And then um, they actually... Because uh, they always send you an email, because I order online. And they're yeah. like, were you satisfied? I was like, No. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I was not satisfied. And then somebody called me from Pizza Pizza and I complained to them. And then they gave me the credit for the pizza, which, of course, they mm. fucked that up as well. <laughs> so, <you> know, <laughs> but that one I didn't pay for. So I was in like, it wasn't too bad. Wait, did you didn't didn't complain again to just like continue what, to complain about a free pizza? They don't know that. What if I you eat for? I'll, I'll eat for years. I'll eat like just. Free I mean, they food probably the have arm. your your note on file. You probably yeah, can't. And like, I don't understand how they don't haven't gotten it right. I want a thin crust. You hear that pizza, th- pizza, Mike I be Mayo? Able to slide it under a door. Um, yeah. Why thin crust, Mike? Thin crust, crispier. It's like you know, it's okay. good. I like the undercarriage. You know, um, David under- Portnoy. Undercarriage. One bite, everybody knows the rules. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, really quickly, can you just like stop fidgeting with the uh, the sides of the uh, microphone? No, because like, you, you touch like the uh, the little knob. You keep sometimes. like you oh, keep like adjusting and, and you, and you this. Can hear it. Yeah, yeah. Are we gonna yeah. edit that part out? No. All that all all the. We uh, we don't have to edit. No, we don't have to edit any of this out. <laughs> no, it's great. fine. It's my <laughs> first time on your podcast. I'm nervous. I want it to go well. It's okay. Just <laughs> you. It is going well. <laughs> That's good. He just got yelled at. Yeah. Just just yes, don't nice. just don't fiddle with this. That's all. No one threw a but, ball of yarn up on this thing. <laughs> Mike is a you 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 are a fidgety person. Yeah, a little bit. I'm happy I didn't get into the fidget spinners craze. Yeah, that, that was. <laughs> you, you, did you ever like pick one up and? Yeah, but I didn't see the point. Yeah, of that. yeah. It's really stupid. I mean, it's not. It's it's a, yeah. it's like I see the the appeal in it for Do you sure. Remember yo-yo balls from the nineties? They had well, you they mean had yo-yos? yo-yos? Then they had they had a yo-yo ball because. The whole gimmick of the yo-yo ball was it always came back to you, so there was no skill. It was just like for stupid. Kids. I didn't know that. It was yeah. like a rigged yo-yo. Like it just yeah, like it just like did the work for you. Sure, yeah. That's stupid. Why don't you well, teach people how to yo-yo? Remember uh, devil sticks and pogs? Oh my oh. god, <laughs> bro! Yeah, those are fun. <laughs> yes, I remember pogs. I don't remember. <laughs> why they existed besides no, collecting them i think people like oh there you go yo-yo balls yo-yo ma oh my yeah. god that like i don't know okay that's the like tinkle, tickling my nostalgic like, uh, brain because wherever we go it comes back to the packaging for children's toys are impeccable aren't they mm-hmm. like the like I the graphic designer now. that has to like go through oh, all of that look at that there's a very specific type of graphic designer that has to like do oh, the. Me, 
I know that, but like, could you imagine like it, it, a graphic designer has a love graphic design to do? What this. were your favorite toys to uh, pl- to play with as a kid? Um, I really liked. Oh my god, I loved Barbies. As you know, cliche as sure. that yeah. was. I yeah. so Fernando liked Barbies <laughs> too. Um, Who wanna touch my toe? <laughs> That's a very inside. That thing. is an inside joke. <laughs> That's a very can we can we should we talk about it on the show or we don't have enough time? You have enough. Actually, we don't. No, Let's I don't. Want to talk I feel about like that. hey, Marco Brasho with the big head. All right, sorry. <laughs> we met, can you imagine what? if Marco Brasho is? He's a not fan? listening. I think his head is so he big. I think he had a brain aneurysm. Or something. So he's dead. Marco, no, he probably, R. I. P. I don't understand the guy. He was riding a motorcycle. How does he get a helmet to fit? They, on the, they, they, you know, you can get a specialized. His size. head was huge. I think he had giganticism or whatever. Okay, maybe. Well, maybe he grew into it. He was a child, right? Who want to touch a mutton? Okay, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> he loved Barbies too. <laughs> I loved playing with Barbies. <laughs> um, I, my my sister and I had really liked like we had a big imaginations. We'd like yeah. to play like Barbies, and we used like the play house. Yeah. So like I remember buying Elvis, silly putty a lot. I don't know. That's a that's a toy, right? Like silly, silly putty was yeah. That was silly it. It putty. Wasn't a, it wasn't in a, like a plastic peanut. Yes. Yes. I remember that. Silly putty. Uh, for some reason, yeah. I like silly putty a lot and play doh yeah. because you yeah. can like make little things. Do you remember the play doh fuzzy pumper barber shop? Yes. And then the guy I, you could push the yes. guy on the chair, and he would grow it like these. Big green yeah. radioactive looking yeah. dreads like a Rasta from Chernobyl. Yeah. Wait, what, was, what was that called again? <laughs> the, the Play-Doh Fuzzy Pumper Barber Shop. He oh, my, Mike one. has a way of remembering yeah. the names of things I, like yeah. like no one else. It's I, incredible. I think I uh, yeah. I think I remembered your name after like maybe a month of Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ab, ab, it, na, is it na, na, is this it? Is this it? That's yeah. the newer one. They have. Well, yeah. I mean, last um, last Christmas we were buying gifts for your nieces, That's and we right. went to Toys R Us. Yeah. And the Play-Doh section of Toys R Us is it's pretty big. It's an like it's any t- any there. anything you can imagine. They have a Play-Doh set for so like pizza, like anything. Like if you <laughs> I can't think of anything else now. I want to mention this as well because this is also <laughs> something I talk about on stage. But the dollar store toys. Yes. Let's talk about those They're, for a second. Okay. Well, the, the kit, the dollar store. Well, mm-hmm. I went to the dollar store to mm-hmm. buy my niece a uh, gift. Yes. And uh, all the toys at the dollar store are weapons. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of your bits. And it's yeah. true. It's, it's true. true. When we, we went there it, last weapons. last yeah. week, and there was like literal yeah. like army like armor. Set. Yeah. Like so, armor. there was like the helmet. And that's like, right. They had a yeah. <laughs> there was the helmet yeah. and like, I don't know what else. And it was all and like camouflage. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy my six year old niece a battle axe. Yeah. <laughs> they have a bow and arrow set and a cap gun and all these weapons. I was like, why are all the dollar yeah. store Are you going to say your whole bit weapons? on weapons? Yeah. Cause, and then I realized it's because when they have a war, they send poor people's kids. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you go to West Mountain, you go to their toy stores. They're all educated. Oh, look, it's a, it's a microscope and a thethoscope. Become a doctor. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, a book on law for a six-year-old. <laughs> you know what's crazy? There is, like a, there is like a bougie kid store near my place. Yes, yeah. a Monkland. Yeah. A Monkland. And it, you all educational. <laughs> it's, it, it's like all these cool little like, you know, like educational type toys or like yeah. these cool little like play sets and shit. Like, or like a bunch of books. Yeah. But none of it is like I think I saw like one cop like costume mm-hmm. for like oh, a toddler, yeah. yeah. But the rest were all just like in like 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 fidget toys or like some kind of puzzle or some shit. Yeah, yeah. that's so funny. Yeah, it is really. I don't want children to get bullied, but I feel like that child should get reprimanded if he wants to be a police officer. I feel like they should try to be like, no, that's not right. You should. I mean, we. But okay. then, if he actually does become a cop, he's going to be like the crooked one who's going to be. He may not tickets. be. He but may not be. Most cops, we don't know about this hypothetical. Most, cops, child most people who wanted to be cops exist. have been bullied. <laughs> That's what it is. That's why they I mean, give you tickets for some riding the wrong way on a sidewalk or something. Mm. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you're drunk. Uh, right. Right. In, uh, in the middle of the <laughs> summer. Listening to your headphones. Will, uh, they, will they give you a ticket for writing? Oh, on God, the... I'll tell you all about it. Oh, my God. Okay. That's, another, that's another, skip stories. Another time. Fuck you, another Officer up, your, Duke. Your, your, what? Your shirt does unbutton. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
Can we edit this? No, we're not editing this. I have a so, nice stomach. Yeah, you do. You're a very hot human being. I was you too. Um <laughs> I was uh, prepping for this podcast and listening to podcasts with you with Pentelis. Yeah. Um by the way, this is already a better podcast than any of the episodes you've been oh, with wow. Pentelis. Uh suck it, Pent. No, I'm just I'm, go we listen to Pentelis. We talked about the high a lot on that. Degrassi. See, at the how, end of you did? Ex- yeah, at the end of the episode with Pente- Pentelis. Which one? We talked about how uh, I don't know. It was one of the later ones. Uh, okay. How many did I do? Like two or three or something? You did three. There was okay. one that I did with Mike Ward and Pantelis as well. Mm-hmm. And I had a whole uh, 10 minute story about how I shit my pants on a trip with my parents and like I destroyed a pair of Super Mario joggers. Mm hmm. <laughs> But that's you know, a that's a good story. That, that Go po- listen that to podcast. Pat podcast. No, but that had a paywall, thankfully, because there's <laughs> not enough people. Like it, apparently, that podcast plays across the tri-state area in New York. <laughs> really? You know? Yeah. So they all know me as the guy who shat in my Super Mario. So they know Mike pants. Mayo. Well, some guy wrote like, um, I don't. Some some guy named. Uh, Baby fucker uh, two seven one is wrote, a big fan of yeah, you. Yeah, no, he wrote. Uh, I don't know whoever this Mike Mayo character is, but let's hope he never does comedy again. Oh wow! And I was like, okay, so not a fan. No, no, he didn't like my story. I was like, maybe but it was it was impromptu. I didn't prepare yeah, anything. I don't yeah. even know. How I went off. Into maybe, it. maybe, um, maybe he'll become a fan after this. You podcast. know what happened? Yeah. I was in the woods and I was crapping and I was with my sister and she told me, hey, somebody's coming and mid shit, like I stood up and the shit broke off in my ass and then it went into the pants. That, that's cool. And then I sat on it. It was like a pancake of poo and we were driving uh, How home. old were you? Old enough to know better. I was like six or seven or oh, something. Oh, no. Then, you're but, not, but, okay. It, Super Mario was, it was, you know, whatever. Yeah. Super Mario was desecrated. And we're <laughs> driving home through the country. Stop fiddling. <laughs> <laughs> Are my parents gonna see this? Um, absolutely not. She you're, hosed me off when we got back to Montreal. She hosed me off like I was a prisoner arriving at Rikers Island. She waited till you got back to Montreal well, to because clean I didn't want to tell off? them that I was shit. I was like, oh, I was like, it you smells didn't... like crap in here, and I was like, <laughs> it must be the the cows. I wouldn't. They're like, I think we're taking the smell with us, and then I started crying. I was like, oh. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I pancaked it. That's so gross. Yeah. I'm so sorry that happened to you. I'm so sorry you're dating me and I'm telling a story on your show. Oh, that's nothing I haven't heard before. I oh, know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, speaking about shit. Did you think it was going to go this well? And I, I, I don't know what it was. This you is not our, what I was you expecting at all. Was gonna go, I don't know what I was expecting. What? I don't know what I was Let's expecting, talk about but our not favorite this. restaurants. Yeah, after we talked about shit for the last. I, speaking about poo, well, we, we go what about fancy place we before make poo the poo happens? Roma- rom- yeah, that's for making poo. This romantic, <laughs> we're like, let's go make poo let's, together. Let's start from the beginning. Yeah, well, <laughs> it starts in the kitchen. Well, it technically, starts from the ground, and then somehow yes. it ends up yes. in the water. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's how food. That's how food, <laughs> that's how food is made. Sure, yeah, the so. ground yeah, and it, water. It grows, grows, and then, yeah, and, then it, and then it goes back. This cycle of life. Yes. Is that what life is all about, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So. So what, what is are, your okay? So. <laughs> Can we real, like let's start reel it over? in. No, we're not starting. Oh, over. Right. You know, people are actually going to listen to this episode because know. they know that thing. you're my boyfriend. Yeah, and they're going to yeah. want to know the dynamic. This and they're going to feel guys. bad for you. This is it. I was going to keep it professional. Decision. I was going to keep it. Uh, it's not fun though. I, g- you gotta have I mean, a good time, I yeah. kind of wanted some sort of control over this. <laughs> Stop fiddling with. Oh, me. God. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like my watch? It's a sweet and when my mom oh does my, my God. clothes oh to my get God. him clean, she uses bleach. <laughs> okay, let's let's reel it in. Let's reel it in. <laughs> How much time do we have left? I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Thirty-five minutes. Oh, oh boy! Oh my God! That's okay. Thirty-five. I'm gonna, All right. Okay. So food. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're, we're gonna uh, go eat later. Yes. Yes. Emma's. Emma's. We're, Emma's. We're gonna go Emma. We Shout out the, to Emma's. You, yes. t- you tell the you okay. listeners. So Mike about and I um, are vegans for most for the <laughs> yeah, most yeah, part. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah uh, for yeah. the most part, I am flexible with it, definitely. Um, yeah. But I definitely don't eat meat. 
Um, and uh, him and I, I mean, I definitely have a passion for uh, vegan food and vegan restaurants and uh, cooking. Um, so yeah, like, I mean, he mentioned Emma's. Emma's is a restaurant that has vegan options in the West Island. Very good ones too. Yeah, really good one. Lots of options, mm. lots of options. I like that. And you see that more recently yes. um, with a lot of different restaurants having plant-based options. Um, but you started being a vegan before all of that was cool. Yeah, I'm a big hipster. <laughs> or is it cool? I don't know if it's I cool. I think it's pretty cool. In 2004, I think it was 2003. 2004. 2000, that's no, it might have been a little earlier than that. I was 18, yeah. so it's like over 20 years. Okay. I definitely probably didn't know that vegan was a thing in 2004. Well, I stopped eating meat when I was 18, and then I think a year later I decided to like cut out animal products and okay. eggs and dairy and stuff. Okay. What made you do that? Uh, I was, it was for animals, and uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> Just <laughs> animals. <laughs> no, because for the animals, I had, I had, a, I grew up with, uh, you know, animals. I had a dog and a cat and a big mm -hmm. hairy Italian father, and like I didn't want, <laughs> I didn't want <laughs> to like you know engage in the suffering of them, you yeah. know, with animals and stuff. So yeah, like, of course. Um, also, when I was a kid, I went to. Uh, my father's friend had a farm, and mm. I saw them slaughter a pig. You saw them yeah. slaughter a pig? And they scream like children. They scream like kids. Well, yeah. I, mean, I don't know what kids sound like, maybe. I assume they sound like that. Like they go, it's crazy. And then also remember watching like footage of them clubbing a baby seal. Don't on the CBC? Google slaughtering a pig, please. Do not up. do that. Do not. PETA uh, put out a whole bunch of those videos. I was a child, and I remember watching. Um, it's going to make me sound like a big... <laughs> like a big wuss no whatever. go for I it i saw when i was a kid like they was a there was like a thing on cbc and they clubbed a baby seal oh and then i started crying and then my parents were like yeah this guy's gonna get bullied as a <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> when he goes to school because like i was too sensitive you know i was always sent like mm. i love animals i don't want to hurt anything i don't yeah. want to hurt animals and stuff yeah. animals are innocent they're like babies they're like, yeah they're like children you don't yeah. want to protect them yeah so, I never, yeah. I never saw a pig get slaughtered, but my father has slaughtered, does slaughter his old animals because yeah. I grew up on a farm. Yeah. Um, I did see chickens being. I heard about that. And they yes. run. They run a little bit. When um. Oh God, There's I like a know. reflex. That you cut off their heads. Yes, and then they run that, for, that's like the. Uh, <laughs> run <for a> <laughs> that's like no, like a chicken, like you whatever with it, like a chicken with his head cut off. You like. There, there's an expression, Running right? Running around like a chicken with his head cut yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that actually, actually happens. Do. Like they move around, but that's, that's just horrific. like that's horrific. That's like a horror like film. Nerves firing after. Yeah. Um, it's really gross. It's. I wonder if that happened in France with the guillotine, when they cut off people's heads. Ah, and they run into oh the crowd. Oh my god. And stuff. Okay, let's switch like, subjects. I can't cool even. I can't instead. even. So that's like when I being exposed <laughs> be to it funny. as like. I would laugh if I saw it. No, um, you wouldn't. No. I, <laughs> You'd yeah. be traumatized. <laughs> yeah, but it's insane. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Um, let's go back to it. <laughs> sure. Well, that's really why I um, I became a vegetarian initially, because I was just exposed so, to, like, I grew up around animals, you grew too. Up on a farm. I grew up on a farm, and I yes. just couldn't, like, disconnect from, like, yeah. seeing it alive and then yeah. eating it. I just couldn't do that, which, like, I mean... I know a lot of people can. Um, I just, I don't want yeah. to like, you guys make your own choices, you know? I don't judge people, I don't judge people either, for sure. I know um, it's it's definitely harder to be... It does take some cognitive dissonance for people to eat meat after they kind of see what's going on. But yeah. I also want to say this on the record. A lot of people who are vegans, like especially like the radical animal rights activists, yeah. I know uh, their heart's in the right place, but some of them are fucking losers. <laughs> like I used to get... In, I used to go online and <laughs> get in uh, arguments with uh, on social with um, people who are like radical animal rights activists mm -hmm. and they would shame people. Like there was this girl eating... Uh, she was... Uh, part of Greenpeace and she claimed to be a vegan but she was eating oysters okay and then some guy wrote he he shared it some guy that I was following on mm -hmm. Facebook and he was uh and he had been vegan for like uh six months or something stupid and okay it's like a recent convert and he was like all over, over yeah. zealous yeah you religious 
you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he posted, I didn't know vegans ate oysters. What a, what a dumb bitch. And then some oh. people in the comment thread, I was reading it. I was like, what's wrong with these people? I was like, I hope that bitch cuts her hand open. And it was all this hateful shit. And they were like, that's why I don't like to identify or call myself a vegan because I don't want to be associated with you people. These You're a bunch of like radical nut jobs. You're like, yeah, it's like a religion to them. And then I started saying, it was like, well, first of all, oysters are mollusks. Mm-hmm. And they don't even have a central nervous system. So, mm-hmm. and then I tried to make a valid point. And I'm like, secondly, mm-hmm. you're shaming this person, doesn't help anything. And then they're yeah. all calling me out to like, um, and they're all really dumb because mm. they don't know. <laughs> they're yeah. just like, they're just really dumb. So, please, somebody, yeah. wrote, somebody wrote, Mike Mayo, you very stupid. <laughs> As a as a rebuttal, I'm wow. like, I'm like wow. yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna associate mm-hmm. with these people. Um, yeah. yeah, the stereotypical vegan are are intense. Like they're definitely intense. These are the example yeah. of that. But then there's yeah. like the you know there's yeah. lots of different yeah. versions. Like we like what we are, and like I literally don't yeah. care what you eat. Like I don't just this is what I eat, and I don't. Yeah, don't we make really good food though? We, we do make very we, good. When we go to good restaurants, we find uh, yeah. good stuff. I just yeah. want to mention as well because when I got started and in, uh, involved in it and stuff, mm-hmm. it was like through music because like a lot of bands that I used to like were vegetarian, and vegan, and we we're talking mm-hmm. about that. And then I read a lot what of books genre on. of music. It was like mostly like punk, hardcore, okay. and stuff. Okay. Um, but uh, interesting enough, after I started doing stand up, so people are like, oh, this guy's like a vegan comic. Let's book him on shows. I got booked to do an animal rights uh, rally. Yeah. Which is like, you know, you think, you know, people with a good sense of humor, that's where the best comedy <laughs> happens. Like places yeah. where people hold signs yeah. mm-hmm. uh, saying meat is murder. and <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, tell us the details of that. I've heard the oh story before God, and it's kind of insane. hilarious in a way. Um, so they book you, you show up. <laughs> they, they book me to do the show. So how did they find your name? Vegan, like, oh, vegan, like when they go, would people Google Mike Mayo to say vegan comedian? I don't no, think so. No, I think it's because I had jokes about it at some point. And somebody okay. saw me on a show. They're like, hey, I had a joke, this whole thing at the time about being vegetarian, but also Italian, which means my dad thinks I'm gay and blah, blah, blah. Like, it was a really stupid thing. And then uh, I talked about it a bit and I used to have some jokes about it. And then somebody saw me on the show. They're like, hey, there's like an animal rights rally. I don't know if you want to do some comedy there. I'm like, does it pay? And I think they paid me. Okay. I think I got like yeah. a veggie burger or two or something. Like something, something. And um, I went and I was like, oh, that would be interesting because I never did that. It would be exciting. It would be a cool experience. Yeah. I didn't know that yeah. I'd walk away with, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was insane. So they, you show <laughs> up at so this place. They hire you. They, you show up. What yeah, happened? I like, was, uh, how many people are there? Yeah, Where is it? There was maybe like a hundred plus people, but or uh, more. I think there was like maybe close to two hundred. Okay. Did they hire any other comedian? No. It was just you. It was just me. <laughs> For how many minutes? They told me I did two sets of twenty minutes each. Okay. The same set or two? no different jokes. Okay. And, uh, the, oh god it was insane so there was a woman standing on a stage that was made out of like almond milk crates or something I don't know. For real? <laughs> no i'm just joking I don't, no. it was made out of it was made out of sustainable uh, free range plywood or something and then yeah free range plywood and then on the side and then the side of uh, the stage <laughs> on each side there was a t- big screen tvs yeah and on one tv they were showing animal slaughter footage and on the other one, they were showing, <laughs> um, uh, like, animal testing vivisection yeah. footage yeah. where they're, like, putting a blowtorch on a bunny's eyeball or something. Oh, my I was God. Like, it was really graphic. And the woman is talking. She's like, everybody should go vegan. We need to end this injustice and suffering. She's almost in tears. Everybody's gasping. Oh, they're all into it. They're holding a <laughs> vigil for, like, a puppy that died because he put lipstick on his face and it was toxic. Uh-huh. Some, something that happened. Whatever. Everyone's, like, really, really into it. Uh, yeah. And then she's like... Anyways, with that being said, I uh, hope you guys are ready to laugh. Uh, we got uh, comedians coming up to do, jo- and I had written jokes for uh, about yeah. veganism, animal rights, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going. Uh, and I didn't even mention that. I was like, at one point, I think I, I kind of like, I didn't know what was going. I was like, I was like, do you guys mind turning this televisions off? I think this is like, kinda, they were still playing. They were still playing while I was on TV. I was like, yes. oh my god, they don't know like. Comedy doesn't really work yes. when innocent beings are being yeah. tortured on each side of the stage. <laughs> no, 
they, yeah, I people feel are, like uh, imagine people should jo- know. Imagine, that, jo- imagine, imagine going to to the comedy nest. Yeah, and it projected these like horrid images. Just imagine like, on while one, you're performing on one side of the th- stage, they're kicking a puppy in the yeah, and then the other one, they're <laughs> dropping a cat in a pool. Oh God, or something bad. That's so they're like, oh, don't you guys like to laugh in comedy? It was like, what? That these people don't know anything. They don't know what's yeah. going on. Were people laughing? No. Well, they started laughing a bit when I started acknowledging how insane it was. Yeah. And then after I had like a squeegee punk uh, started yelling at me because I was speaking English, and he was like, "En français," and I was like, "What?" And it was like, "En français." So then I did my material about Quebecers and the mm. French language. And then all of a sudden, I had half of them really laughing, and then half of them hated me. And I got off stage, and people were like, hey, what the fuck is that? I was like, hey, come on, man. I'm trying to work with what I got. Yeah. So I went on a thread, the comment thread on Facebook, um, later mm-hmm. that evening or the next day or two. And it was all like, they didn't know my name. They just knew mm-hmm. that they didn't like me. <laughs> they were like, yeah, c'est quiz, c'est quiz, uh, c'est humorist, fuck off. And I was like, okay. <laughs> At least if my name was there. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't even know. I was like, thank God, in a way. <laughs> oh, my God. Was. Yeah, it was really bad. Vegans That's... have no sense of humor. <laughs> they don't know That's what, such they a don't blanket know. statement. No. We're vegan. We have a sense of humor. Yeah, I wanted to do a show. <laughs> I was going to call it Hold the Mayo. Yeah, you, you're still going to do it one day. Yeah, one day. I, was doing yeah. It. I don't know if I should do uh, cooking. That sounded I like condescending. Cook. when I. You're still going to do it one day. One day, little one. You don't want <laughs> I hope so. No, I think it's schedule. a good idea. Mm. It's a uh, like. I mean, you Mike heard about it here. One, the fa- his favorite part of the week is going to the grocery store and yeah. L- yeah. So he wants to review vegan products. What are the and things that we make that are really good? I mean, we make dragon bowls. We do make dragon bowls. Yeah, dragon, dragon, bowls dragon sauce. Uh, yeah. We d- use the air fryer a lot. I do like a good bowl. We do, you know, I like a good bowl. We make good, uh, so like uh, burrito cheeses. bowls, uh, and then like yeah, we do make vegan cheeses as well. Because we got the Vitamix. You have the Vitamix, yeah, it's yours. I feel like <laughs> uh, half of the audience tuned out right now. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, this what is, are some is, of our favorite restaurants that we like to go to? I mean, uh, I really like Hello One Two Three on Monkland. Um, hello, <laughs> it's pretty it, good. Hello. It's one, two, th- I don't know. Um, I I do like uh, Oviv a lot. It's another it used to be way better back I in know. the day. I know you used to like work it. there. I you didn't s- work at Oviv. I, I worked s- at Burritoville. I thought you said you worked at Oviv. I worked for- at Oviv for one day. Well, when I and said you like, used to work there, yeah, you're one right. day counts. But I didn't know one. No, because I worked there one day, and yeah. it, that was when they uh, swapped from being. Like super awesome, like a hippie commune. Yeah. And then there were like a corporate restaurant all about making money. All the quality of their products went yeah. down. Oviv, if you're listening, you're not uh, half the place you used to be. Yeah. You shitty bread. Oh my god, they're still they're delicious. Me, no, don't, but it's not as good. No, because the chapati it. bread is good. If you're I, buying products at the store, listen up, people. Listen, don't buy their <laughs> ready to eat products at the store. They use crappy pitas that are full of preservatives that you could buy for like ninety nine cents. They're not anywhere near as good as they were. They're using canola oil in their pro in their sauces now. They're not using the extra virgin organic olive oil that they used to have. Are you done? No. Pl- it's Pl- shit. Please sponsor I, us. Because so it, it, it was a please mutual. Please sponsor us. It was a mutual <laughs> thing. I was like, the, I worked there a day. I was like. Your products, are, your your ingredients yeah. are shit. And it's then the guy got mad at me though. because I was I, wrapping sandwiches slowly. He was like, "You're going too slow." I was like, "Fuck! What is this assembly line?" China sweatshop thing, like <laughs> fuck this, and then I was just like, I didn't, I didn't want to work. So, anyways, <laughs> Oviv used to be better. It used, to, but it's still good. Hey, I I ordered I gotta, it the yeah, other yeah, day, yeah. and it was yeah. still good. I gotta say though, and don't call me out for this because this is something that I used to say a lot. But oh, it no. used to be owned and run by hippies, and that was when it was the best. I don't okay. know why you're looking at me like I'm yeah, but because you <laughs> OV, you're like don't call me out. Don't call me on this because I've told you this before. Oh, okay, it was run by it was a. Oviv, oh, I started doing the Define thing. hippies, though. What is that? Well, they're like people who don't bathe and stuff. Oh, my God. And, uh, <laughs> they oh my think God. that deodorant <laughs> is a form of government mind control. Uh, <laughs> I was working there, and then, uh, you know, there was, uh, I thought it was awesome. It was the food. It was great. It was like 95% local organic food. Yeah, and I do really, agree really with, good. like, it should, Cheaper. like, I, I love a place yeah. that is, like, has local products. I love that. I thought it was great. I thought it was the only restaurant in Montreal where the women should have been required to wear hairnets under their arms. Because... 
Oh they my were God, those, Mike they were those kind of hippies. They had yeah. big books. That's just a lot. It was okay. a lot. All right. And they would All wear right. tank tops to your table because that's, that's how much they didn't care. Okay, let's change this. If you got a hair in your food, you don't even know where it's from. Yes. Okay. But that was part of the appeal. That the that food was, was amazing. <laughs> I don't care. I'll deal with pubes <laughs> in my fucking sandwich. <laughs> it was like cheap. It was good. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a finicky curmudgeon. You know. <laughs> I still love Oviv. Yeah, they're a lot better now. Yeah. Well, in terms I do of like a. I do like a place that like. <laughs> you like that has local products i do so like we love i love uh health food stores and like yeah. that has like Here's local list, stuff uh, shout outs to health food stores yeah which health food stores would you like to shout out uh branche olivier is pretty oh, good fun. yeah pretty that's the one near what about the health tree in the west island they're big yeah you know? that's pretty or a big. tow in the west yeah, island Remember we went yeah. there I mean, back in the day when you started doing, uh, like, going was vegan, nothing. there was nothing, be- there was nothing besides some health food stores. And yeah, now, and there were few and far between. Yeah. I used to go to St. Denis because it was, like, a towel health food store that was open since mm-hmm. 1978. Mm-hmm. So I used to buy stuff there. And then you go to the local grocery store, all they had was, like, <laughs> you'd get, like, a, a carton of soy milk, Vita Soy soy milk. That was the only <laughs> soy milk they had. Mm-hmm. It was like from the eighties or nineties or something. Mm-hmm. Get a carton of chocolate soy milk. Chocolate. Of, that's Ooh, the fancy. one I liked. <laughs> uh, block of tofu. Okay. Get hummus and stuff. You could buy okay. it, but you didn't. They didn't have everything. Now everything you want, you could get vegan. Oh, absolutely. Which doesn't necessarily make it. It the doesn't healthiest. make it healthier. People sh- yeah. like should know that like just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're this like health nut. Like there's so much vegan yeah. products that are so unhealthy for you. Super processed. It's high in salt super and super processed. You want to eat like whole food, plant based beans and yeah beans and uh, yeah. whole grains and legumes. I mean, and we definitely indulge in the unhealthy stuff. Sure. To, Def, like the like the Beyond Me products like we love, but it's definitely not the most healthy. Um, yeah. uh, so I think there's like a misconception that like oh you're so you're vegan you're a health nut like no yeah. like you can definitely be unhealthy yeah. Yeah, as sure. a vegan yeah. for sure. Yeah, I really like the President's Choice plant based line of products. Oh, yeah, they're good. They make their pancakes. Yeah, the other day I had a awesome breakfast. It was, pl- uh, it was a weekend. I work hard all week. I want to have my breakfast. I made pancakes <laughs> with vegan butter and maple syrup. No one was arguing with that. Like, oh, no, pancakes? God. No, Mike? they were the best. <laughs> we had Beyond Breakfast sausages. Yes. And then we also yes. got the juicer. I made a green smoothie today full yeah. of like good stuff. Yeah. Got yeah. to balance it out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> what about Indian restaurants? Can we talk about Tanjay too? Tanjay's Is there not good. a fully vegan restaurant? Mm, yeah. But Tanjay was our first date. That was our first date. Yeah. And I farted on your lap. Yes. Um, backstory to that, context to that. <laughs> There's a lot of beans in it. <laughs> Mike Mayo and I went on a first date to yeah. this Indian restaurant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, like the classy person that I am, I brought him home after. Sure. Um, yeah. And... Um, I don't even think we had sex yet. And you fart. We were like laying down That's and he farted. Intimate, I think. He, this is more intimate than I think sex. That's way more. People have yeah. sex all the time. He How many first fart date on one farted on my leg, and that's when I knew I loved him. Shout out to Tanjay. <laughs> <laughs> Just Van pa- Horn. Pass that. <laughs> Van Horn. I love it. They have because uh, it's not a vegetarian restaurant, but half of the menu is vegan. You could get dosas. You could control the oil level and and the yeah. spice. You get the spiciest stuff, and then you won't be able mm-hmm. to be sweating. And it's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so good. What did we have? It was mm. it was great. What was what I mean? I remember I had Manchurian. chana masala or whatever. Mushroom Manchurian. Yeah, yeah, Very good. Yeah, What's you you fa- had a dosa. Yeah. Dosi do. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of food, Abby? Um, thanks for the question, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Not goldfish crackers. I I love oh I don't love goldfish crackers anymore. But I love Mexican food. That's you, true. You know I, that. I knew that. I don't know, but yeah. your uh, viewers and listeners. Yeah, I, I do. I love. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> I I do love uh, Mexican food food a lot. So I do like making burrito bowls a lot. Your your burrito bowls are delicious. Yes. They're yeah. Very, I make a kill. So you just you just get a bowl. You get vegetables. You grill vegetables or air fry vegetables. Um, <laughs> All tree and XL. Then you have some sort of protein. Amazon. Some sort of protein. Uh, you have air fried tofu and beans. Yeah. You have salsa. You add guac. guac. It's fucking delicious. I'm hungry. 
I'm hungry. It's good, but it's why we're going to go to Emma's later. Yes. Yeah. We'll yeah. give a shout out to Emma's as well. Yeah. We were talking about it before. Yeah. Emma's is a place on Donaghan in the West Island. Yeah. And uh, they got like tons of vegan food. We're going to get vegan pizza. Yeah. They even got vegan poutine and uh, burgers. It's not, it's again, not the healthiest. No, this it's not. Emma's so Montreal. This is not it. Definitely no, not that's, it. I don't remember that, fella. It's <laughs> Emma's <laughs> West Island? Emma's West Island. I don't know. I think uh, I just show this and. I doubt that there will be any images from it. No. No. You got to no. go on Happy Cal. Can we oh, mention? There? Is that? No, that's no, not it's Emma's not. At all. No, it's I not. I want to mention that as well because as a comic, and we'll get. I guess we could talk about comedy stuff. Well, we are gonna get into yeah, comedy now. We should probably talk. Well, yeah. So this is a bridge. The thing. Yeah. Because if you're traveling as a comic, and if you are uh, looking for vegetarian, vegan food, health food stores, mm-hmm. you want to download an app, the Happy Cow app. Mm-hmm. And when I was a roadie. Um, <laughs> for my friend's band, I was doing stand up. I was traveling to like you know do shows in Ontario and stuff like that. Yeah, or in New York too. So it helped you find. Yeah, you want to find so because back awesome then spots. I don't even think we had, we didn't have smartphones. We had flip phones. I'm an old man. Yeah. So I had to like uh, whenever I got internet access, I was like, oh <laughs> look at that. And usually I would like travel like skateboarding through the city trying to find mm-hmm. vegetarian restaurants you know that's so cool happy cow dot ha- happy cow you can find a search engine it'll give you like access yeah. to it's all an that. app now it's an app yeah yeah, yeah. And that's how we found out about emma's yeah yeah My buddy's found cool. out about let's emma's. get into comedy sure yeah, yeah. Let's do that. That's when did you more s- interesting. <laughs> when did you start comedy i first time i got on stage i was 19 that's amazing yeah so that's almost that's almost 20 years. Sure. But I took a lot of time off because yeah. of school and other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what inspired you to get on stage? I always wanted to do stand up since I was a kid because mm-hmm. I used to love watching stand up on television. Mm-hmm. And I was a big fan of uh, Seinfeld, the mm-hmm. show. I love the opening monologues. Yeah. And I remember like my parents, like my mom and my sister. Uh, my sister's not one of my parents, by the way. That was <laughs> it was my mom and my sister. I. Uh, they were talking about, oh, how interesting is they tell the jokes, but they don't laugh. Uh, that's part of what makes them so funny is that they they have a serious face when they tell jokes. I didn't know until oh, years like, later. Oh, like Jerry wasn't laughing. Jerry, because, yeah, because okay. he was doing the monologue. They're like, yeah, they talk and they don't laugh. It's like, well, they're not going to laugh at their own jokes. It's only years later. Yeah. I thought I was like, because that guy heard the joke like a um, hundred. They said the th- joke a thousand they don't, yeah, million exactly, times. Whatever, for sure. Dead inside. I mean, I still laugh. laugh at some of the jokes that I say. Yeah, I know. Stage. But at a certain point, I think yeah. you become so jaded with, uh, you know, a lot of comics are depressed. and <laughs> you know, They don't see the. They don't hear the laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Where was your first open mic? It was at the Comedy Works. That's not okay. down on Bishop Street. Yeah. And I remember I used to go with my friends. I used to hang out and drink with these Irish guys from mm-hmm. LaSalle. They're crazies. Mm-hmm. They're crazies. From LaSalle? Yeah, LaSalle represented. Gang, gang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you uh, just did the loser side yeah, on your that's, yeah, that's <laughs> Oh, LaSalle. L. Yeah. I'm dumb. Okay. Yeah, well. <laughs> <that's cool. laughs> You usually have to explain it to someone. Uh, Anyways, <laughs> so I went to the, we were going to Jimbo's because it was a bar. And I didn't know with the com- I didn't know anything. I didn't know the comedy books was there. Mm-hmm. And my friend's sister was working the bar at Jimbo's. And they had on, uh, I think, Friday nights, they were doing karaoke. Mm-hmm. So I would get drunk with my buddies. And then I will go do karaoke. And then I would tell jokes. Like, oh, I had a mic in front of my face. So I was like, I want to do stand-up. I would write down stuff. and yeah. I'd really want to do stand, but I didn't know those places to do comedy stuff. Yeah. So like I would use that opportunity while they were queuing the next song, I would tell jokes that I wrote mm-hmm. and then people were getting mad. They're like, what do you do? Like somebody came up to me and handed me a business card and said, you know, there's a comedy club upstairs. <laughs> so you Get don't the ha- fuck out of yeah, here. You don't have to tell jokes to the tune of achy, breaky heart. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's cool. So then after like I signed up for the open mic, I did it like a week or two later. Do you know who you spoke to the sign up for the open mic? Then? Uh well, it was the guy running the stuff at the time. Okay. The phones. Uh, okay. I don't remember. He think he passed away since I don't remember his okay. name now. There was a guy I used to call. Okay. Actually, years later, after I graduated university, I got a job that summer working at the old comedy works for Jimbo. Yeah. So I was cleaning. I was on his radar. I was hosting like mm-hmm. almost every Monday. I was doing weekends. Mm-hmm. I got to talk to like big name comics on the phone because. I was answering the phones. I used to. I, I got to call, uh, talk to Tom Rhodes on the phone. Oh, cool! And I got to meet with them, smoke cigarettes with them outside on the fire escape. Okay, it was so cool. It was like such a great. That time. is cool. Yeah. What is your favorite set? Do you have a favorite set you've ever done? 
favorite set I've ever done. I've yeah. done so many sets. I don't know. There's is there one that like stands last out. Last night was fun. Last night was really fun. That was fun. They were yeah. drunk and crazy. Yeah. So yeah. last like uh, Michelle and I, who yeah. was on the last podcast and the first podcast, um, we have a show called Lawn Last where we go to people's backyards, and Mike was on it, and uh, the, yeah, the crowd was insane. It was really good. Yeah. They were yeah. Fun. They were like they were really loving everyone. They were wild. They were so drunk. They were yeah. so drunk. But they were in the best way. Um, I'll tell you one of the best sets I think I ever had, and this is a really crazy story. Okay, it was uh, my second year showcasing for JFL, mm. and I was already all nervous. And then I got um, they were picking the, their lineup, mm. and the, uh, Kelly McKeegan at the time she was running JFL. You know, she yeah. was there in the back, mm. and they drew my name first. I was like, oh fuck, like I'm bullet, you know. And then on top of that, as soon as they drew my name first, I got a phone call from my sister telling me that my dad was in the hospital because he just had a heart attack. This and is was, your... Okay, go this on. This is my second year of 2009 okay. uh, showcasing for JFL. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, you know, like I'm at just the Just for Laughs showcase. Mm -hmm. I just They just drew my name first and then I got the call. But it put everything into perspective. Mm -hmm. So I was suddenly not really nervous about the show because I was thinking about my dad and I was, yeah. I was happy he was okay. And I went up and like... It just put everything into such great perspective. I went up and I destroyed. I got like two applause breaks. I was able to hold the joke. I remember at one point I had finished doing a, uh, I was hold. there was a joke that I used to do where I used to just stare at the audience and I held it for like 30 seconds. And the more that I would stare at them without talking, they would just laugh. That's more amazing. More. Yeah. Cause I didn't care. And then, yeah, I got all this feedback. All the industry people was like, all oh, hands down. He had the best set of night, but because I didn't care. Cause I yeah. was, because I wasn't nervous about the show anymore. I was like, oh, yeah. man, my dad almost died. He yeah. Was that was like yeah. one of the most memorable things. I oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I love the... I love the idea of like that silence on stage. I always yeah. let when I see people yeah. do that, like Nazir kind of plays with that. in one of his yeah. jokes, one of our fellow comedians, um, where he just like is silent. But, and like, I, I like that tension. And if you actually get people to laugh during it, that's amazing. Yeah. I remember the joke. I haven't done it since. I don't mm -hmm. know if I ever could ever bring it back. If you want, okay. I could like give you the gist of it. Okay. But the joke was about, how I, I grew up at, in the 80s and 90s, and there was a lot of commercials on television telling kids not to do drugs because they'll no. rot your brain and they'll make you stupid. And mm. I was sitting there watching my TV set like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Huh? And then I would just stare, and the longer I stare at them, the more they would laugh. <laughs> is that not a that's a really good joke I maybe mean, i'm biased a, i, I think don't it's know a good yeah I think, and it worked really well like, yeah <laughs> i thought but i never i, had, I haven't done uh, it in years that's so simple yet so yeah it's it so like, funny oh, don't don't do drugs they'll rot your brain and make you dumb i was like yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> on tv yeah because i'm like oh yeah because you know people who watch uh, perfect strangers <laughs> eat eat Doritos watching like yeah. fucking TGIF or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. All right. This is making me smart. I can feel my brain growing <laughs> <laughs> while watching this educational program. <laughs> oh, what what kind of antics is Balky gonna get into today? <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely i feel my iq points going mm -hmm. up that's so funny do you remember one of the worst sets you've ever had oh god yes what is the several of them what what is i the... got booed off stage twice at the uh, uh, grumpies booed off stage twice. i got booed off stage but it's grumpy no but not no, but not, no one gets booed nobody gets booed oh, i got okay. booed but twice like, okay once because there was this band there was this uh there was this musical act, uh, this musical group, uh, Ladies of the Canyon, and they just got signed to Sony Records. So they were celebrating at Grumpy's, and they were in the back of the room. And uh, by the way, for the record, because you know you're telling me I was the only comic who ever got Young Guns twice, yeah. I also uh, performed at the very first Grumpy's Drop the Gloves Open Mic. <laughs> Whoa. That's true. That's cool. I was there. Andrew Searles and I were the only two comics, and... I got a hit on by an old man and stuff. It was a whole thing. That's fun. Yeah, it was That's cool. fun. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so I was at the, both times that I got booed off stage. First time was like the ladies of the canyon were there and they were drinking and like probably doing blow and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like all nervous. And they're like, and they're like uh, they were just laughing. They started booing me because they were all crazy. 
And then another time I told the joke that they deemed offensive and they blew, they're like, let's boo and boo. And this time I was like, yeah, fuck you. And like, I had like mm. turned on them and then I yeah. had half the audience really on my side, really loving me. And the other side of the audience wanted yeah. me dead. So I caused the rift and the divide. Yeah. Um, how do you like physically get booed off stage? You're just like, you can't No, continue? they thought it was funny. I was like, and the second time I had that thick, so I was like, fuck it. First time I like hid in the back of the bar and I didn't want to see anybody on. I wanted to escape. I was all ashamed. And okay. then after you don't care. And then the worst set I think I've ever had another, well, one of the worst sets I ever had mm -hmm. was on the late show at the comedy works on a Friday. And mm -hmm. all the industry people were there. All the people from just for last were there, the owners of all the clubs. And I went on bullet and I was just like, not in a, I wasn't feeling it. I was in a bad mood for whatever reason. And I went on and nothing packed house, no laughs, like nothing. Absolute oh dead God. silence. Every time oh I tried God. to recover, I'm like acknowledging the jokes are going bad. They're not laughing at anything, mm -hmm. anything. They gave me nothing. And then I got off stage. I was like, yeah, okay. And like, <laughs> I was like catatonic. Yeah. And this girl that I knew from high school, I had a crush on her back in the day. She's like, hi. I was like, I was hanging outside of the club all disheveled. Like, <laughs> and she's like, oh, hey, I was going. I had this crush on this girl in high school. Yeah. She's like, you want to hang out with my friends and like have a drink? I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, then, not the time. No, and then I like drove my friend home. And I was like, I didn't talk. I was like, yeah. yeah. The that's next like day, tra that's like traumatizing. The next in a day, way. I remember yeah. waking up and it's like you think it was like a bad dream or something. Yeah. Maybe it didn't happen. Maybe yeah. I thought it happened. I know. I've had yeah. a couple sets like that for sure. But they make you sure. better though. They do you, make you better. They for to, sure, um, for sure, make you better. We do have to wrap up. We're really, really, okay. we're pushing the time. But I always uh, end with. Two questions. Uh, one. How do you make dragon sauce? How do you make detail? How do you make dragon that sauce? Every, every guest. Every guest. Only me. Um, and okay. Not that. Not that. Okay. But uh, what is one of the hardest things you've ever been through? <laughs> you don't have to go into detail about it. I know. I, I, you we know it. We talked about it a little bit. But you could just the time say that I found Santa Claus wasn't real. Oh yeah, that was a no, was like, that was that's a tough one for everyone. Just my uncle uh, drunk yeah. in a suit or something. Yeah. No, that's not true. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, the hardest thing. Oh, it went. No, I was watching wrestling as a kid, and uh, the Rockers. <laughs> um, Shawn Michaels threw Marty Jannetty through Brutus the Barber Beefcake's mirror, and I cried for two days. Oh. No, these are all because I. It's I a know. defense mechanism. I don't want to talk know, about the I real know, stuff. I know that. Okay, don't we want, don't have to. You don't okay, have to answer it. I'm not going to answer. Okay, it's fine. I'll just say it was the death of a loved one. Yeah, yeah. That's actually the truth. Um, I'll, there's been a lot of responses like that, like, "Oh, this person passing away was really the hard, rockers so. were breaking up." Well, like, that's a hard one. That's really hard. <laughs> they were supposed uh, to go to WrestleMania that <laughs> year and everything. And <laughs> the last question. The last question. Uh. What is what is the thing in your life that you're most passionate about? You, me, yeah. Nah, but what's this fucking studio haunted? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what am I passionate about? I like uh, making people laugh, fun, yeah. and I like uh, making people happy. I like that's why I like making food. Mm -hmm. I like to cook. Remember yeah. when we go to parties and bake like the yeah. You're always you're like stuff. um an Italian grandmother. You're always you always Italian bring. Grandma makes good. Food. She makes a lot of really good Potatoes food. Good. But you do you do act like an Italian grandmother sometimes. You just sure. bring over food. I like uh, I like mm -hmm. making people happy and yeah. I like exploring ideas. I like innovation that's mm -hmm. going to bring joy and happiness to people and make people feel good. Yeah. I like I like it when uh, I'll tell you something. I did a show last Thursday. <laughs> And I was closing the show, and I, and it was like a lot of fun. I had a really good set, mm -hmm. and I had uh, these young guys come up to me after the show and solicit me. No. <laughs> no, they might as well have. They were so they were like these huge fans, like oh my god. And they were like it was it was so endearing because they were all like shy, to, like nervous, to talk to me like mm -hmm. you were so good, man. You were so funny, and like how long they were asking me all these questions about comedy, and it reminded me of when I was younger, seeing a really good comic, and I was like I felt really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, flattered, you know, yeah. and it's good. And it's and like last night also when we did the mm -hmm. show and that guy 
was like opening up to us. I was like, you guys don't know, man. You guys make people really happy. Yeah. And if we could do comedy and like make people forget about their problems and stuff, it makes it it makes us happy. Like they give us love and we give it back. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. like such a great thing. It's so positive. That's an amazing answer, Mike Mayo. Thank you, thank Abby Stonehouse. You. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. No problem. Uh, it was amazing. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> <I hope laughs> you you fidgeted the entire time. Probably made. I did fidget a you, lot because Zach want to have I'm a hernia nervous. or want to. Uh, like I'm a nervous. stroke hernia i want to nervous on your podcast you didn't you didn't i'm not no, done yet you're we're still filming uh, <laughs> i want dragon wanna... sauce recipe <laughs> you start with nutritional yeast <laughs> thank you all for listening uh thank you to our funders our sponsors pantelis studio yeah. zach kick i'm um, sorry for his fidgeting uh fernando sorry the listeners again fidgeting. like Follow, subscribe, follow us on Patreon. Um, and thank you so much for being here again. No problem. I'll see you uh, next time. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>